Hey, this is Asha. Thanks for joining me in today's episode and video. And what I want to share with you today is probability of touching and how to use this in your favor to do an option trade or setup. Uh, a lot of times when we go into trading options, we have probabilities, probability out of the money, probability in the money, and probability of kind of touching. And I'll share with you how to use these probabilities, more so the probability of touching to set up an option trade to your advantage. So stay tuned and stick around. All right, so as we look at uh, probabilities, um, you have uh, three types of uh, probabilities. So the first kind of is probability of in the money, probability of out of the money, and probability of touching. So these are the three that we kind of have. Um, if you're looking to sell, let's say, vertical spreads, you know, um, sell option premium, sometimes you might want to be out of the money. If you are looking to buy a call or put, sometimes you want to look at in the money. Today, we're going to focus on probability of touching. And all touching means is if you have prices of, let's say, here is uh, 280, 290, 300, 310, and 320, well, maybe the probability of touching one versus the other is a little bit higher. So you might have a uh, probability of this one being like, let's say, well, let's say the stock price is around 400 right now. And the probability of touching this one might be, well, it could be, hey, this could be 30%, depending on the stock. This could be 22%, uh, this could be like 12%, this could be 8% and 2%. So there's different probabilities and I'm going to show you how to do a trade setup using these kinds of uh, concepts of probability of touching. And all touching really means is, hey, I'm just going to go over here, touch that price and kind of either move up or down from that price. So it's kind of get close into that price range. That's all it really means. So as we go and uh, check this out here on our screen, I'll show you a good trade example that um, basically is a good setup for this. And here's a butterfly trade which is really nice. And a lot of people think that a butterfly trade, just because it has that peak, that really that's all you're looking for when you're uh, looking to make money on this trade. But really, all you need for that butterfly trade is to go ahead and kind of move into that direction that you're setting it up on. And it could just move any other way beyond that. So uh, you can see on this trade, I put it on a few days ago, this one, uh, profit and loss just for the day is 131. So I was just kind of waiting, waiting, waiting for it to shift. And now it's kind of went into profitable territory where I'm profitable about $120 on a 725 dollar position. So that's a pretty good percentage of return uh, when you're looking at it from a percentage perspective. So um, if you want to look at this on other uh, example, here's a Amazon example as well, a very similar uh, concept where you could see I went ahead and positioned it kind of further downward. And you can see right now it's up. I just positioned that one today just a few minutes ago, actually. And uh, it's starting to move down in my favor. And you can see it's outside of that range. And all I'm looking for it to do is just kind of move in that direction. And I'm risking about $960 here, as you can see, uh, to possibly make, even if it kind of goes in that range, uh, maybe let's just say about 400. So, you know, half on your money. It's pretty good, right? 50% return. So let me show you a trade setup here. And um, let's just do one on, uh, let's say, Home Depot here. And if I'm looking at Home Depot and I want to go ahead and put this trade example, I want to go ahead and probably do it about 37 or 44 or 65 days out, depending on how, your time view and outlook. And before I get there, I want to switch this probabilities. And when you look at your probabilities here, here I have my calls. You can see probability in the money, out of the money, and I could go ahead and switch this to, let's just zoom out right here, probability of touching. So that's all I'm really looking to do is now I've switched that column. So the probability of touching now is on there. So you can see there's the probability of touching, but there's the probability of in the money. So I'd like a high probability of touching because I want it to kind of move in that favor. So that's about a 52% is if I'm looking at about a 250 uh, strike price. And I could do this on the call side, wanting to go the stock go up, or I could do it on the put side. 
Uh, so if I'm doing it on the put side, same thing here, I have probability of touching right there, probably go down to about 215. Um, and that gives me about a probability in the money of 30. So if I just kind of want it to touch and move in that area, 210, 215 is where I want it to be. And the chart of Home Depot, as you can see here, this is a five minute, but let's go to the daily. You can see it's kind of at all time highs. So I'm okay with it pooling back. So if I'm looking for a pullback and I'm looking for about a 215 area, um, that would mean that I'm looking at 120 days out. Now, I want it a little shorter. Why would I want it a little shorter? Because I want time decay to kind of start kicking in. And I think maybe in the next month, because I'm looking shorter term, right? In the next one to two months at most. So I want enough time to where probabilities are working in my favor, but I want that data to kick in at those sweet um, premiums that I'm selling. So 23 days, 37 days, that's kind of what I'm looking for. And now my probabilities are a little different. So now it's 225 is kind of that 50% of uh, touching. Um, and I could do 22250 or even 220, but that now starts to get pretty far off on this on the selling side. So why don't we do something around 225 and I'll go ahead and buy a butterfly. And here's the butterfly. You can analyze this trade. And let me go ahead and add a couple contracts. And I'll spread these uh, strikes out just a little bit. So I'll go kind of a little bit more, 230. And this is 220, about five points on the width. And let's unlock it. So now I'm risking $228 to potentially make, hey, if this thing pulls back about 50, 60 bucks. So, you know, on your investment, $60 on 228, it's pretty good. And you could continue to bump up the contracts, or of course I could widen it a little bit and go 235 and 215, and now I need a little less contracts. So now I'm risking about $1,155, you can see. And for that stock, if it just pulls back a little bit, you know, I'm just looking for about a five point pullback. Uh, on about a thousand, let's see if we can go four contracts, about a thousand bucks, four contracts, four, eight, four spread. On a thousand dollars, I, even if it pulls back just a little bit, I could make about $200. So 220 to 230. It could even be a little bit more with time decay. And that's why I chose a little bit less, uh, of a, of a day expiration. Because if I go further out, well, it doesn't give time for it to work. Cause now all of a sudden this continues to work for a few days. And now if it does pull back, hey, I could actually make a one-to-one -one return, $900 on my 900 uh, invested or capital. It's not realistic, but you get the idea and how it works and functions. So anyways, my goal here is really just pulls back. I can make about 240, 220. Uh, if, if it kind of hangs out and starts moving up, I probably wouldn't want to risk more than two, 290, 300. And I'm risking a little more because I want the probabilities to work in my favor. I want to let it sit because... Uh, you know, sometimes you get that wiggle, it pops a little higher, and then all of a sudden you get a massive sell-off. So that's kind of why I would put on a trade like this. And that's how you use these probabilities in your favor to do a trade setup when it comes to probability of touching. So that's really what you're looking for. You could also use this for like swing trading. If you're doing any kind of swing trading, hey, what's the probability if I get into a trade 20 th in 23 days for that stock to go up, let's say to 240, hey, you got a 60% chance. And if you're looking at the 245s, well, at the 245s, you only got about a 33% chance. So chances are you might get 240, 245 is a little bit of more of a stretch. And a 247, if you got 247, when you entered the trade and you look at these probabilities and you write them down, you could say, hey, uh, I got into the trade and now I'm at 247 you probably better take some profits because you're going to get stretched further and further because these probabilities keep shrinking, right? Because your chance of success becomes less and less. So that's how you could kind of use them to your advantage and in your favor, even if you're swing trading and not option trading. So anyways, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you found this video helpful and insightful. Remember to hit the subscribe button right here and to join us uh, on YouTube or go ahead and join the newsletter list uh, by clicking the link over here as well. And of course, don't forget to check out our website at tradersfly.com. That's where we have some additional courses and training material that you could check out more about probabilities, options, 
and trading better on the stock market. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.